Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 45. Okay, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 6, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to talk about overtime. We're on the sheet Gross and Overtime Method 1, second example. Now, we actually already did this one, but I want to do it again here and compare and contrast it to some other methods for calculating overtime. All right, so in the last video, we saw how, to, saw how to do an if formula for regular hours, and then a formula to calculate from regular and total overtime hours. So in this cell, I'm going to type equals if. The if needs a logical test. And the logical test is, hey, are our hours greater than 40? So I'm going to click on this relative cell reference, greater than symbol, and then 40. We can type the 40 in because that's something that's not going to change. Right? That either comes out true or false. Comma gets us to the next argument. And this is just, hey, what do you want to put in the cell if this is true? Well, if our hours are greater than 40, then we want 40. Otherwise, if this comes out false, then we want, oh yeah, just this cell right here. For example, when we get down here, since this will be not greater than 40, we want to just put this 20 there, right? Meaning that this test comes out false. So one cell to my left, a relative cell reference. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and double click and send it down. All right, so it looks like it's working perfect. Now the calculation for overtime is simply, oh yeah, regular, my, I mean total hours minus regular. Here it'll give us 7, down here it'll give us 0, because 20 minus 20 is 0. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Regular gross pay, we got to use the round function. We're multiplying potentially um, decimals, right? Because w these hours are just all integers. But as we saw in our last example, we can get lots of uh, non-straight integers, like right? 47.25 or something. So we're going to say, oh, regular hourly wage times our regular hours, comma 2, close parentheses, control enter, and double click and send it down. Looks good. Overtime. Now, we have done what is called a two-step method. We calculate the regular hours and the overtime hours. So we simply take the 7 times the wage times the rate for overtime. Now, 1.5 is common, but there's lots of other ones. So that's a number that could change. It could be 2 or 3, for example. So here I'm going to do round. And in any order, this times that times this, or however, whatever order you want. Right? Hours times wage times rate, comma 2. And that purple one needs to be locked, so I'm going to click there. I should have done that when I was first entered the cell. F4, that locks it. So as I copy down, it's locked on that cell right there. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Equals SUM, because we need to add them up. And then I'm simply going to highlight these two. Control Enter, double click and send it down. That's looking good. That one's looking good there. All right, so we have our two-step method, right? We have two columns, one for regular and one for overtime hours. We also have a column for regular gross and overtime gross. Now we want to go over to gross and overtime method two, sheet. And on this sheet, we're going to do what's called the overtime premium method. All right. Now, we still have to calculate our regular and overtime hours. So I'm going to use the same formula we did last, just a moment ago in last video. I'm going to ask the question with the if function. Is this greater than 40? If it is, the value of true, and this is what we're putting in the cell is 40. Otherwise, if it's false, what do I want in the cell? whatever's there. right? So if this is less than 40, it'll just show the number. If it's greater than 40, it'll show 40. Control Enter. Right? And now our overtime hours equals total hours minus regular. 
Control Enter. Now let's test this. Let's do a number below 35. Oh, it's working fine. 40 working fine. And 47.5. Now the way the overtime premium method works is you first have to figure out the overtime rate minus 1. Now 1.5 is our overtime rate. And I'm just going to do this over, the t um, over to the side here. Now I'm going to call this extra rate. This is the amount extra you earn for when you work overtime above this 1950, right? So I'm going to take the rate minus 1. Well, what is that going to give us? It's going to give us 0.5. It means if we put our wage here, the extra premium we earn for every hour worked above our 1950 extra amount would be, oh, 1950 times the half, right? Oh, so in overtime, we're going to get our 1950, but we're also on top of that going to get some extra amount. Now, if I change this to 2, because that's a number that could change, you could get double time. Oh, that means you're going to get your 1950 plus an extra 1950 for every hour. All right, I'm going to change this back to 1.5. Now, the way this works is you calculate your straight earnings off of the total amount and then the overtime premium. So I'm going to say equals round all the hours times our wage, comma, 2, close parentheses. Now, wait a second. That seems so counterintuitive for overtime. All of the hours? Yeah, yeah, that's just the all the hours times the 1950. But now we're going to calculate the extra amount. If you worked all 47.50 at the flat rate, that's what you would get. But now here's the extra amount you got above and beyond your 1950. Equals round. There's our hours, overtime hours, times. And I could click right there, but I'm not going to do that. I want it in one formula. So I'm going to say the rate minus 1. Notice I had to put it in parentheses because I want to force that subtraction to be done first. That just, in essence, if you were to look at it and hit the F9 key, you could see, oh yeah, that's the 0.5. I'm going to I hit F9 to evaluate, so I Control Z times our wage. And if you were to evaluate just this part, you better get exactly 9.75. I'm going to hit F9. Oh yeah, look at that. Control Z. And then, of course, that 975 times the number of hours worked in overtime, that'll give us the premium, overtime premium. And then the gross is just the addition of both of those. 99 All right, so that's the overtime premium. Let's go over to the sheet GO method 3. Now, sometimes an overtime is driven by law and contract. Sometimes the employer pays overtime for a day, right? So there's eight hours. Oh, but he worked 10 hours total, but two in this day, so he gets two for that, right? If we were to add all these up, one great trick is if you highlight all these and look down on the status bar, you could see the sum is 35. Well, that's not above 40, but this person's contract says, no problem. We're going to pay you if you work more than eight hours in a day. So I'm just going to add these up. Alt equals. Ooh, it didn't get Sunday there, so I'm going to redirect it. Copy it down. That's a relative cell reference. The gross is going to be equals round total hours times our 10.15 per hour, comma 2. Close parentheses, Enter. And then our overtime amount. Oh, yeah, we like this. Even though we only work 35 hours, we still get some overtime. Round. OK, so all of the hours times our wage times the overtime rate, comma 2, close parentheses, and Enter. All right, so that's just taking just those. The hours worked um, on Monday and Thursday. 
and calculating your overtime pay. In essence, this is a two-step process too, right? We have the two, so now we can add them. Actually, Alt equal would have worked just fine there. Alt equals and enter. So 389.51. All right, um, one more example. If we go over to the sheet, salaried overtime. Sometimes in the contract it says, yeah, we're going to pay you a weekly salary, but you're only required to work 40 hours. If you happen to work over 40 hours, we'll pay you overtime. Well, the problem with this scenario is that it doesn't tell you what the hourly wage is. Well, no problem. We can back into it. All right, let's click in cell uh, B8. And we want to calculate the number of overtime hours. Now, we don't need regular hours like we did in the last couple examples because she has a salary. We just want number of overtime hours. I'm just going to go flat out this minus this. And that just means if she works overtime, it will show up as a some number. If it doesn't, then you would enter 40 there, and it would show up as 0. Now we need to calculate our hourly wage. We need to back into it, in essence. In the contract, it says this amount for 40 hours. So we can back into it by simply doing division. Hey, there's all the salary divided by the contractually required 40 hours. Now I'm going to control enter here. And I didn't mean to have that. It looks um, like we probably wouldn't run into trouble here. But again, if you're multiplying and dividing decimals, uh, you definitely can run into trouble. And this is an hourly wage, right? We only have to the penny, so we have to use round here. So the rule is multiplying or dividing decimals, and you're required to round, then use the round function. All right, And then I can see there's no more decimals, so I'll decrease this. So 1876, that's our hourly wage. We have our hourly wage, number of hours, the overtime rate. So we use the round function again. We're multiplying round. I'm going to say wage times overtime rate, overtime rate times the number of hours worked for overtime, comma 2, close parentheses. All right, so 161.81. OK, so for those five extra 5.75 hours, that's the extra pay. So the gross pay then becomes, oh, yeah, the salary plus that amount there. All right, so uh, that's four examples of overtime. When we come back in our next video, we'll talk about equivalent earnings. See you next video.